Excellent, thank you. So this is where I make sure that uh, everyone up top can hear me okay uh, for the live feed as well. And I think I'm definitely unmuted, so it's just to turn up on that. So uh, thanks very much for having me. Also, hi to everybody who is on the live feed, who's watching live, but then also those of you who will watch this on replay as well. Um, my name is Simeon, and I'm uh, uh, essentially I shoot photo and I also shoot video. The aim will be, during the course of this session, we'll, I'll be using the Neo Light and, and EOS, but what I really want to happen is I want you to take away core principles of lighting that will then help push you forward. Um, you, you, you've seen a lot, actually, with, with Jason. So there will be some overlaps, but I think it will really help just kind of push you, push you forward. Um, I'm going to show very quickly um, a couple of bits of past work. And then we're going to move straight in and we're going to have fun. I use lots of different types of lighting um, and, ver and lots of different brands. Um, and I'm always interested in how lights mix together. But then I did end up totally falling in love with the, with the rotor lights. Um, I looked at them again after having not looked at them for a while. And then I fell in love with them. One, because of the quality of the light output because of the flexibility that it kind of gives me as a, as a creative. I'm here, I'm using the um, Anova Pros, um, which I use for all sorts of things. And one of the things I loved is I love the, the special effects that are contained within the lights. A man that blew my mind, that just started to give me loads of different options. Um, and I'm always looking for big things in smaller packages, and that's where the, the, uh, the, the Neo 2 uh, comes in as, as well. <laughs> as me in the office. Um, when you turn this light on, it is so bright. Um, it, it's, it's fantastic. I'm probably be a little bit closer than I, than I, than I should be. Uh, and tanning up my skin, I, uh, and getting darker. So this just gives you an idea of on, on shoot and on location. Um, I will use the lights that, with larger productions, I'm not always having to work with lights I own. So I might personally own and choose to have rotor lights, but I may have to think about mixing them with, with uh, you know, other manufacturers, whether it be an Ari or a Kino Flow, et cetera. And knowing that the quality was up there, um, and in some cases, I was actually using the rotor light to drive the Kino Flows for special effects. I mean, like, whoa, that's seriously cool. Um, uh, and, and the quality was... Was, uh, was totally there. So I, I love looking at the rotor lights as things that I own and I have myself. There may be times on big productions where you get to rent things in, but for the lights I have, what I need is I need total flexibility. I need to be able to go from small shoots to big shoots. Um, I'm going to now actually just go straight into, should we just get on and start to get creative and shoot some stuff? Does that sound good? Um, so let's... Uh, you got an idea of, of, of background. Um, and just like with Jason's, uh, keep the questions coming. Um, and we're just going to try and have some, have a little bit of, of, of fun with it. So I am going to firstly start where most of us start on um, with, with, with events. Uh, and also kind of vox pops, uh, running gun type of scenarios. So, uh, I am now not beautifully exposed, but it's partly because we've got lights that are casting on, on here. So I'm going to use barn doors just a little bit, just to try and filter this light and see if we can just reduce the flare. Nice. Uh, let's see if we can get to just bring those barn doors. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Can you see already the contrast has just increased? It's got a bit better. That's just the, the usefulness of the, uh, of the, of the barn doors. Uh, and I am now going to switch on. I'm going to turn the camera this way, because if I turn it on, if it's on 100%, you'll freak out. Okay. 1%. OK, we can manage that. All right. Let me just go up for you. OK. <laughs> Are you OK? <laughs> it's a bit bright, right? It's a bit bright. And my ISO right now is very low. So I'm actually going to increase the ISO uh, to, there we go. I'm going to make sure my shutter speed's correct. And actually, can we turn down the house lights just for a second, just so we can get an idea? There we go. And I'm going to get the focus on you. So if you can imagine that uh, in those environments when you're working in very, very dark um, events, that this 
actually, in a run and gun scenario, is going to be really damn useful. Because as we're moving around, the light is tracking the picture as well. Yeah? On camera is not really the ideal. It, 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 it works and it's... You Whoa, flipping heck. Okay. Look, it's made a black man look white. That's how bright it is. Yeah? Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this one down. Okay? And just get my... In fact, can I bring you in front of the camera? Because your skin tone's quite similar to mine. Okay, perfect. Come on. Give him a round of applause, please. Because you weren't expecting to be here. Okay, nice. Uh, you've got, you are also looking brighter than you would normally. So I've got a couple of options. I, I can turn this right down in terms of the power. Uh, I'm at 50% there. My ISO is on 2000, just so you know, right? So on a 1DX Mark II, ISO 2000 is nothing, really. Um, you can see that the image is, uh, is very, very clean. I'm now dropping down, and I'm at... Anyone guess the, the percentage? You, you can see it, so you're not allowed to. I'm at 7%. Yeah? I'm at 7%. And imagine if you're doing a... Um, if I was doing an Indian wedding, which is m the weddings I used to do were mostly Indian, even though I showed you the only English wedding that I probably ever did. Uh, if I was to pretend... Um, so you've just got married. Um, how, how do you feel? Yay. <laughs> yeah? Uh, and, and we could be walking around getting Vox Pops, and then all of a sudden, I could then run in front of the camera, and it would be my interview, and you'd go round, please, and you would ask me a question. I'm lost words. <laughs> uh, marriage is sometimes good, and it's sometimes very, very painful and, and very, very difficult. And, and, and then someone else could be around here, and we are still in business, yeah? Because the light is on the camera, so what this does is it means that, in fact, can you steer the camera for me? Yes. It means that we have total flexibility. I think we're on autofocus, so as long as, yes, we go. Um, it, it means we have total flexibility as someone is moving and walking around, if you don't have another assistant and someone else you know, with you. So on camera light, very, very useful. In fact, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of quick training on this light. I don't know if this one here is the brightness. Okay. Uh, I know I've got an annoying backlight at the moment, but you can turn this up as I move away. Uh, my ISO right now is still ISO 2000. I'd have the option actually of decreasing that if I really wanted to. In fact, let's, let's just decrease this down. So I'm, I'm at 640. No, no particular reason. My shutter speed is at 50, so that bit has to kind of stay the same. Okay, now you need to increase the brightness of the light. There we go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, excellent. So now I am still in a position where I could present to camera and I could walk around and I would still have a shot because the light on the front of the camera is now, because it's twice as bright, almost twice as bright as the previous model, um, we're, we're in business and I'm able to capture the shot, uh, let alone when I get into the creativity of then starting to play with the colour um, as well. Um, thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Give him another round of applause. Of that. Uh, so let's just have house lights just for a second. Um, so this situation here uh, at the back of receptions is never ever uh, quite ideal. So I'm going to just switch this off for a second. There are those situations where any of you do kind of events where you are in a large hall, yeah, and it's really dark, and you can boost your ISO. It's okay, it helps, but you still need light, even if you're shooting on a 1DX Mark II or if you're shooting on a, a Sony and the ISO can go up something crazy. Having light helps you get less noise in the image. So what we can do here is I'm going to switch this on and we're going to put these at the back. Okay. And this is kind of what we would do on a, on a shoot. An, on an event, so I'm going to just bring this up a bit, just to get a little bit more height. Okay, so I'm going to switch on at the back, and I'm going to put these on 100. And you can see in the room now that this is quite dark. Uh, admittedly, uh, it's because we've got this exposure shift because of the, the lights, but just so that someone taking this doesn't trip over. Uh, can I borrow you? Can you put this at the very back of the room? And I want you to angle that light back into the room for me. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, we've got one light, we should have more, this one here, okay, I'm going to just take off. 
in the meantime, I'm going to get this exposure kind of set in a little bit of a better region. Nice. In fact, see at the moment, when you look at you, you're not quite in the corner. Is that because there's like a fire, ex there's steps down there? Okay, see that corner just in front, the top step. Is there any, yeah, that'd be perfect. Ideally now, I would definitely want more height on that. So in a second, I might just get you to ah, lift it up higher because um, the light stands are a little bit shorter. But this is typical. It wouldn't normally be totally black, would it? An environment. They've normally got some type of ambient light. So I'm now going to increase my ISO. Yeah. And there we go. And what will happen is because of the backlights, I'm now going to start to get much better uh, definition in terms of, hey, you guys, uh, in terms of the face structure. Now, the light is not, it's not in your face, right? You're being lit from the back of the room. But by having lights at the back of the room, what happens is you get separation. Now, the way with cameras work, as you might know, with compression, is when colour tones are very, very similar, it gets very, very muddy because the compression that's at work essentially goes right, respectfully. Our skin is kind of close to the red seats, yeah? And it, it can't create that differentiator. So when it comes to the encoding or the uh, in-camera processing, the image becomes grainier and noisier. So just by having uh, lights on the back, we now start to create additional, a really nice feel. Yeah? And we haven't got any additional light at the front. So I, I, I love having small portable lights that you can just throw in the background and then you can use that and it can totally transform your shots, particularly if you are shooting at a high ISO. Now, one thing we can notice here is that the white balance is a different color. Now, for me, I actually quite, I like mixing white balances. So essentially, when you look at the, the lights behind you, you see that that's a, a, essentially a, almost looks and appears blue. But when we look at these lights here, they are not quite tungsten, but they've got more of an orange look to it. So what we're going to do, Ricardo, you'll be comfortable with this already. You're going to change that white balance on the back, please, just to warm it up a little bit. So for you on this one, just tap the second button and we're going to shift it so it becomes warmer. I really need to get fit. Now, the highlight, when we zoom in closer, is much closer to the, the ambient feel of the environment. <laughs> Keep picking, you guys, sorry. Uh, yeah, exactly, sit up, look sharp. All right, so there we go. Got a focus on there. And then here, yeah, you guys, that highlight starts to become really quite critical and also useful. Awesome, bring it back down again for us. Thank you very much. Um, now, let's just think about some scenarios that you guys end up having to shoot. Uh, any of you have to do interviews? Yeah. One or two? Okay, um, so let's see if we can do a bit of a, and, and also actually an interview situation, put your hands up if you do portraits. Okay, cool. So an interview essentially is very similar to your video version of a portrait. The only difference is that the person ends up speaking. So let's see if we can start to create a really nice feel for um, an interview. Okay, can we please welcome uh, India? Give her a round of applause for me. Make her feel comfortable. Excellent. So now, where's the glasses? I'm loving the glasses. You want the glasses? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. And then we'll take them off if the glasses are not working for the shot. Uh, I think that'll be, that'll work well. Ah, okay, cool. I'm not 100% sure, so let's just feel this out. Um, let's do the, here. Facing outwards? Facing outwards, yeah, into camera. Okay, go. see. okay, nice. Excellent. And then I'm just going to check my, my shot. In fact, can I get you to sit down in that spot? Thank you. My ISO is at 4,000, which is far too bright. Nice. Okay, so 50 is my shutter speed. And one key fills my camera. Nice, but what I want to do um, is I'm going to change my lens to a, a slightly more interesting lens. So I'm going to bring out a, an 85. Uh, 85 is great on a full frame camera because the compression that's there already is great for things like portraits. So I'm going to shift this onto an 85. Excellent. Uh, I've got a lot of quite nasty uh, 
light spill because at the moment what we haven't done is we've not shaped the light we've not positioned it now you've got a hair light which is coming from that light i know you're going to hate me can i get you to switch that light off for a second is that right yeah thank you very much okay perfect now i'm in a situation now well ah that's interesting I'm looking now and I'm thinking, this is really nice, but I've just got that little bit on the top, which is the light from the projector. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to see if the stool was a bad idea. Here's okay. So yeah. can I get you off to the stool and I'm going to reposition you. Let's just make sure it wasn't my shadow that's blocking out the light as well. I think there is okay. Thank you. All right, so let's do this then. I have a feeling, now it's gone dark, but this, like you say, it's because it's, this is creating my light source. So I'm wondering, this might make the situation doubly worse. Actually, so now this is useful, right? Because the light is so bright, I'm actually starting to, if necessary, over the power what's going on with the projector. So I'm kind of doing real life problem solving, which is why my brain, I go a little bit quiet, because I'm now starting to shape. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you talking just over here to me. You look so bright. Okay, so I'm actually gonna turn, I could turn this down and see if this is having, okay, no, we're still, I'm at 2%. That's at 2%. So what I'm gonna actually do, I'm gonna bring my ISO down. I, I, I wanna be shooting 1.4, I reckon, and I'm now 400 and, okay. And now I'm in a position down to 250 crazy where if I want to I can just increase this power of this of this light nice uh, and this is without a softbox on so I'm now looking quite closely at the shadow I know that if you were to turn to face me now the shadow disappears a little it is better uh, if I go this way that that Rembrandt lighting is oh we could get it but we also might start to lose it so I'm also now starting to think about the composition and I'm going to have you facing a little bit over here. Nice. Perfect. OK, colour of the outfit here makes a massive difference because she's wearing black and the background is black, which can be really cool, right? Because you're, you're now you're, you're popping out as a subject and there's no distraction. Um, if uh, you've got a white shirt on or a light shirt, can I borrow you just to show the effect? Thank you very much. Um, if you have, yes, just for a second. Right. It's really interesting now because you've got a lighter shirt on the difference that color of clothing has. OK, so your height will be slightly different, which is all good. OK, I'm going to tap on the face just to get focus. Can you see that now all of a sudden you, you're not popping out as much? It's quite nice because um, the what's happening is you're almost getting a nice feel from underneath. So it's this bouncing off the shirt and filling the face, which is really cool, which means that the colour that your talent wears, if you're in a situation where you're in control, is actually very, very important. So whenever we do a shoot, we have in our mind the type of look that we're going for, and we may steer them in the direction of darker or lighter. In fact, in most cases, this is not totally white. I avoid them wearing total white, because I know we have to do it on weddings, but it's not the most ideal, is it? Yeah, so in fact, you can just see here, I'm not going to rub your chest. Can you just see there, that yeah. difference? Yeah? That is so much different just because it's absolute 100% white. So the colour makes a difference. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Uh, India, can I get you to hop back on again? Okay, now, um, so I'm starting to like the way this looks, but now let's, let's critique this live. Uh, any thoughts? What can we do to spice this up, make it more interesting? Backlight, glasses reflection. All right, let's let's take a couple of things. So um, actually, do you know the glasses reflection here doesn't bother me so much as it would do normally. It's partly because the 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 specular highlight coming or the actual reflection of the light is quite small, and also because the shape of it is circular. I find this. I can cope with that. If we did want to get rid of it, we should just try moving this up a bit. Ah, there we go. Now I have got to be careful because of course what's happening is the shadow from the light, and from, from the rim of the lens is essentially, it's starting to block the eye. 
a little bit. So I do have to be a little bit careful with making sure, and I've got to work out. But can you see the catch lights in the eyes now? So I don't mind that. I also, um, ideally, I should have put this on an adapter. Now what that would have allowed me to do is it would have allowed me to aim down the light. Do you notice that when I moved up, the power of the light dropped? Yeah, and it's just because most of this energy is now going over here and you're not up there. Uh, whereas if it was like that, ah, now we're in business. So it, little plays of light become very, very important. The next thing was backlight. Yeah, so let's add in some backlight. On this baby here, just so you know guys, just a little, little button there. And then you essentially get your brightness control here and your color control here. Uh, let's just add it in and see what we see what we get. Oh, that's your call. Nice. I prefer setting my white balance. In fact, normally I set my white balance with a Kelvin um, because I can see on the back of the light exactly what that Kelvin is. However, I personally prefer a much warmer light overall. So um, what I can do is I tend to mix it. So I wonder if there's a way of me showing you what I'm seeing. Yes, okay, cool. Right, now you can see what I've got. So this might be helpful. So I'm gonna go white balance and I'm gonna go across to Kelvin. And I'm going to, that's not Kelvin, that one's Kelvin. And I could decide that I'm gonna look at the white balance on here and uh, depending on what my profile set to on my, on my camera, I, I'm at 3,150, so I could go 3,000, I can't do 150, but I can do 100. Okay, so that now is white. Uh, for me, I don't like that. Per How many of you like it? How many of you, do okay, everyone doesn't particularly like this. It's because I prefer to see warmer color tones overall when it comes to, comes to lighting. So I'm gonna just warm this up a bit. So I can quite simply just dial that into a region, well, that's too much, where I quite like the feel. For me, it's probably something like that. Admittedly, I'm being polluted here by this light that's here. So, okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just dial this down just slightly. Because what was happening is we were blowing out. So it's important to be able to turn it down and to, and to dim it. And that is on 1%. And I'm on ISO 250, right? Which is, I can hear from some of you sniggering, is pretty ridiculous. Um, what we could do, as I also like to play with a mixed white balance. So I'm gonna now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that color to, let's just see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go quite cool. And I'm gonna now just, I could turn this up. I could also try and get this on the edge of the frame. Can you see you're getting that lens flare there in the corner? Thank you very much. Am I done? Yes, you're done for the moment, thank you. Uh, yeah, I like doing that. So at times what I'll do is, I'll add a light into the corner and what happens is you get a level of flare if you get it on the corner of the frame and you aim it directly at the lens. And, and what that does, it kind of reduces the contrast in the background and can be used quite well for um, some type of cool effect. Um, I'm going to add a gel on, which Ricardo gave me here. Okay. So how many of you use gels with your work? A few, but not all. So um, essentially what you're doing is you're sticking a piece of plastic over the front of the, the light and that changes the colour. So when you saw some of my work that I showed you on the photographs, some of it was quite extreme in terms of the colour, right? And it's because I was either shifting my white balance, but I was also adding a colour sheet over the top. So if I add a colour sheet, when I, when I look at these, um, now I can't remember which ones come, if any, do some of these come with the light? Oh. I know I opened up my box and I had them. Four pack and the uh, ten pack as well. Perfect, okay, so you do get some of these. So I'm now looking at these and I'm looking for options. Okay. Red, uh, I could go for, I'm gonna go for blue, yeah? I don't know why, but I'm gonna go for blue. Uh, any questions as I'm doing this as well? I'm open to questions and suggestions. So keep them coming, that's okay, there we go. Do you think the biggest game is to get that with pitch black background or pitch white background? 
it should be easy, but it's actually quite hard, like you're saying here. Yes. To have a real contrast of black and white. It is not easy, particularly, we're doing this in an environment now where we have got ambient light. In an ideal world, if we weren't all here, I would probably go turn all the lights off and it would be much, much easier. But one of the benefits of having high powered lights is that when you're in a situation like this, you, you can still have the ambient and totally shut off you know, what the camera sees because um, we're at such a low ISO. Okay, there we go. So now what I need to do is I need to increase the brightness. Why? Because I've added a piece of blue gel over the front. When you add blue gel over the front or any gel over the front, it's going to reduce the amount of light that comes out. So that's why having additional power really helps. So I was at like, what, 7% or something ridiculous before. So now what I can do is I can now push this right up and I can start to get creative with this angle. Uh, so I'm going to go like this. Nice. I like that. So uh, I could also, that's quite nice. Yeah. I can, I'm in shot, which is not good. Uh, that's the other thing. If you have a slightly wider shot, what tends to happen if your light is not powerful enough, and I'm on a I'm on a hundred percent here, and I decide that I like this frame. Thank you very much. If the light isn't powerful enough, what you have to do is you have to move it closer. So if I end up moving this closer, I've got a problem, uh, which is why the increased power can really help. Um, what we could do now is I could go into the cine effects. So on the back here of my um, light, I can essentially uh, press a button and if I press two at the same time, go across the menu, I have special effects. And then I get to choose. So let me just see if it's possible. I think the live stream may have just caught that. So now I'm just going to see if I can get this a bit lower and you can see what I mean. And I can press the menu, go across to special effects. Yeah. And then I can now choose what type of effect I want. So for example, uh, I'm on blue, I could go to police TV, actually let's go to Can you see that, right? All of a sudden I'm starting to create story and I'm starting to have fun. So now in my scene, ah, and in fact, I don't want this now as a backlight. I actually need to get this so it almost looks like it's kind of clashing with the face. Right, because actually with a police light, it, it pollutes the whole environment and you start to get hard light and hard, hard shadows. So, there we go. Uh, can we just increase the anxiety in your face just a little bit? <laughs> this was good, this was good. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, in fact, let's imagine a scenario, okay? I want you to imagine I've turned up with a camera and I've asked you what's happening, right? And it's some type of emergency. Don't make it too gruesome. OK, um, uh, and then we're going to see how this works. OK, uh, and I'm going to get you to do it to me. Um, hi, India. Tell us what's been happening during the course of today. OK, well, uh, first of all, there was a, su a sus suspected terror attack. Yeah. Um, I told you not to make it too gruesome. <laughs> In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this light a little worse, OK? Because it looks too beautiful for the, for the, for the feel of the scene. So I'm actually going to bring this round here and there. OK, that's cool. I like this because that would normally be worse lighting because it's flatter. But if I was trying to make a shot that looked like it was a news report, what do they do? They have the light on top of the camera. So now our lighting is now motivated by the story that we've just started to create. So I'm almost shooting, in fact, this is probably in front of the, uh, in fact, I'm going to go like this. Yes. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to just turn this so the light is not a, I'm going to imagine the police would not have a Neo 2. We would like them to. But we're working on it. Um, but right now, I'm going to imagine that their light is not quite a Neo 2. So I'm turning it on to 18%. Okay. Uh, and now we've got this police siren here. I like that. Um, I'm wondering if we've got another blue. Do we have another blue gel? Uh, I'm, even if it's teal, it's be close enough. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Let's see what we've got in here. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I'm going to use you as an assistant. I could go for a slightly. 
blue. It's not as rich in blue as the last one. Um, I'm going to just see what's in here. Okay, I'm going to go for that one. American. Motivated by the light. Okay. Now that, ooh, that one. The right one, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. How much effect on the, the blue light does it have if you, you mess with the colour temperature of the... It will definitely have an effect. So, good question. So, let me just come out. So, first thing I've got to do is set the colour. So, this is on the warmer. Now, I, what I've done is I've set this to 3,150 and this does not look as blue as it did before even though the gel is the same. So, but now what I'm doing is I'm essentially turning the light so it's in daylight and then adding the blue. So with my current white balance, it would almost look blue already. Adding a freaking blue gel on the front of it is now even bluer, which is just what we want for this scene. So it does have a massive play. So what I've done is I've set my brightness first. Ricardo, we've been saved by the creative process. We're going to try going with red. So I'm going to go police. OK, I'm trying not to stand in front of the light because then I might not be able to see anybody. Okay, that's just nice. I'm going to turn up the brightness. And now I'm, I'm doing just what you mentioned, sir, with the white balance. I'm getting a feel of where it looks right, and I quite like that. And then I'm going to now just increase the brightness. Okay. If I go too bright, it will almost look white. And then now what I'm going to do is that option that I showed you earlier, I press both buttons, I go over to special effects, and I'm going to go to police all right and we've started to create a good feel in fact I almost wouldn't mind too much if this was in the corner of the shot because it's out of focus yeah just that little bit of light on the edge of the frame starts to create um, you know a really cool feel and now all we need to do is we need to just work out how what position we want this one in in fact I'm going to put this one on the edge of the frame as well yeah. And now we're going to get rolling as if we were rolling the camera. Okay. Tell me what's going on. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is Simeon Quarry for uh, I ITN News. Uh, can you tell us, what did you see today? Uh, first of all, there we, we heard a loud bang. Uh, we heard wheel screeching. Wheel screeching. And a scream. And a scream. Uh, it turns out there was a, a drunk driver who pulled out you, you're getting nasty now. Okay, we get the idea, right? We, we've just created a, a scene based on essentially, we got three lights, yeah? I'm thinking we should do another scene, right? Because we've got creative options here. So um, now I'm thinking that we should do fire. Okay. Sorry, I feel like I'm using you guys because I'm just having fun shooting and creating stuff. Uh, I'm going to do, now, we need to set this for fire. Uh, I'm going to, where should we put it? I think the frame that we've, whoa, very blue. Kind of cool, <laughs> not what I had in mind. Um, the frame, I'm going to keep the frame fairly similar to what it is. I might just move it back just, uh, just slightly. Um, where should we put the fire? <coughs> below, front and below, exactly. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to now just rotate this. Rotate the front of the rotor light, uh, and then we're going to go for another colour. Okay, so in our little pack of goodies, I'm looking for an, an orange. Now they've got other ones like you know the ability to diffuse to you know and to soften skin and all of those type of things here in the pack. But I'm actually looking for a for an orange. There we go. Is that orange? I think so. When they're dark in. Okay, yes, I think that's about right. What I'm getting is I'm getting the light from the red tricking my eyes. In fact, I'm doing what you should never do. Try setting up a scene with all your lights active at the same time. Ideally, what you want to do is you want to start to work one light at a time. So I'm going to switch off your red light on the back. I'm going to take you out of the red light district. Okay. I didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you. in fact, that would have been a good, no. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to move this here. Now, normally you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't want to light underneath, would you, right? Because it ends up being quite ghoul, ghoul lighting. Um, so I'm going to now just add on this orange gel. So I would never really want to be seen like this. So I'm going to 
For those of you live, I apologize. Okay. If you ever want to play with lights, you know what I do? I never normally say this in public. I go into the bathroom and I turn the light off, yeah? You do the same thing, yeah? You turn the light off, you put on a bit of music, like a movie f film soundtrack, and you become a character, right? And I just literally, I move the light around just to try and get a workout of, of different feel. Um, in fact, let me just see if we can, I've just put a freaking orange gel in there, but I want to show you what I mean, okay? I hope your facial expressions are, are good. Okay, I want you to look at the camera and give a very, very trustworthy look. All right, let me just turn down the light because it's a Neo 2, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna get my distance right. Trustworthy, okay? Nice. In fact, I'm gonna have to turn this down even more. 8%, let's try 8%. Yes, okay, that's nice. Okay, and then now I want you to be evil. Right, nice. And now I, I want you to be, it's going to be as if you've got like a split personality, right? There's a side of you that's dark and there's a nice side of you as well. Now she's trying to work out how she splits the face expression. She's going, do, do I go like that or do I? Well, actually you do it with lights, right? So what I need to do is I need to kind of, and what I would do is I'm going to change the settings on the camera so that we have no ambient light coming in. So I'm going to reduce the ISO Remind me to turn it, wait. All right, I'm gonna bring up that. It's gonna be nice and dark. Okay, can you see her? No, nor can the camera. Okay, which means autofocus is gonna be really fun until we add that. Okay, now I'm in the situation. This is cool, right? Because what I did is I, I made the environment, even though we can see everything here, I've made it totally dark and black, which means now when I add the power over the front, we now start to get a totally different feel. So I'm gonna just bring this out of the frame and I'm gonna just turn this up. I'm at now 88%, 90. And all of a sudden, there, I've got mystery and drama. And you're thinking, who the heck, who would like to go out of her now? Yeah, no, but then when we go like this, we're like, yes, we love you. And when we're like this, we're like, hell no. Okay, so uh, essentially what we do is we start to paint with light by working out the character. In fact, even if you were doing something like an interview or a portrait, I always try and think about that. So if I was doing, I don't know, some type of um, documentary, but the character that I was talking to was the protagonist, essentially they were, you know, they were not a, I don't know, an energy efficient company or they weren't very nice or I would probably light them in a way that made them look a little bit more mm. and they wouldn't even know it right I would just make sure that the light was just a little bit half on and I would make sure maybe it's a little bit lower and closer and it would just feel that that drama would be there and they wouldn't go they'd be in front of the camera talking to you and you'd they'd essentially be going we do everything we can for our customers and you would be looking at the picture going hell no no you don't <laughs> yeah uh, and that's what happens when you start to you can have someone telling you something straight to camera, but with the lighting, you can totally change it. But at the same time, if you're doing a portrait for a corporation, you may want to make sure that they look beautified and friendly and nice. Um, this is very cool and very edgy. So for a documentary, I've definitely, I've, I've used that, right? But if I wanted it to look very, like a natural, comp like a company that provides natural products, and I don't know if they, Innocent Smoothies, for example, the other brands are available. I wouldn't necessarily go for a very low key, edgy look because it's not going to be consistent with the brand feel. Instead, I would want to bring up the own exposure and the ambient and go from there. We started going to do a fire, didn't we? So I'm going to start to try and see if we can do that whilst my battery, my camera dies. I'm going to have to change that one. I'm going to change my settings as well because I tried to close down all of the lights and we don't want to do that. So I'm putting it back in this region. Excellent. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, uh, I'm looking at my white balance as well. Uh, I'm going to creatively just work out where I want this to be. Can I get you to turn to face the audience? And I'm also looking at where the light here, very different, yeah? 
that's a lot flatter. Even if I add on here a fire effect, uh -huh, special effect, fire, okay. Uh, I don't count that as very believable. Um, but for me, I mean, it's believable because the effect is believable. But I think in terms of the lighting, we could do better by moving it around here. For me, that works much better. Yeah? I would probably, just because of the glasses, take a little bit of time just to get the, the specular. But you were spot on. What's different here is the shape becomes important. You see, when I had it here, what we don't have when the light flashes is we don't have any shadow. And actually, when it comes to lighting, the most important play is actually what happens in the shadows, right? That there um, is kind of where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. I know my battery's dying on my camera. So this is where, I'll just quickly do a little shifty change. Um, what else could we do to make this scene better? Memorize it whilst I take the battery out. It could just be background separation, right? That, we, that might make a difference. So uh, let's add in another light from behind. Uh, and I'm, I haven't even touched the, the EOS lights because we haven't got, probably not going to have the time. And I'm going to take out the color gel. There we go. So this is a teal because uh, I would need to spend a little bit more time looking through the pack on the seat over there for the, uh, for the blue one. Uh, and then if I wanted to, what I could do, because I'm not happy with the amount of light that I'm getting out here, which is nothing to do with the light, because you see the distance, yeah, it's quite far away. But I'm at ISO 320, which is nothing. So even just bringing it up a little bit, and then I can bring this one down, we start to be able to create and to have a lot of fun. Now, one thing that some people might say, well, you know, the, the, the Neo 2 is great, but it's a very, very small light source. Um, small light sources, big light sources tend to be more expensive, right? But they can also create a really nice, beautiful light. So um, what we can do there, if I take this off, and I will just raise this, raise this up, and then I'm going to turn off the effect for you. There we go. OK. Nice. Well, it's not nice yet, OK? Because it's just, it looks, on our screen, it looks very, very bright. And what I've got the option of doing is I buy some diffusion paper. Now, I could use Rotolite's diffusion, which is cool. Now, the Rotolite diffusion, what that's going to do is it's going to soften the kind of, the specular LED that kind of, can you, yeah? Just softens it a little bit. Uh, the other thing that can happen is because you've got lots of little bulbs, the one thing that I haven't liked with LEDs is it can mean you get lots of little micro shadows. Do you know what I mean? Right? So um, when you light something, and if you were to look at the shadow, sometimes you just get like these little staggering. Why? Because we're lighting with lots of different LEDs. So you get lots of little shadows. Now, when I tested this, I noticed that beyond about one or two feet, that was gone. It was very soft. But if I was shooting something that was very close, then I would put one of these on and it would just soften that feel of the LED. Also, it's just slightly easier in the eye. When it's facing you, you don't quite have the rawness of that. Yeah? So if I'm in front of clients and talent, uh, that can be useful. But what I'm going to do, a bit noisy. I'm going to put this in front. Now, what I could do is I could fold this again. Right. Now, some of you can't see this so well. I apologise. I should have thought about this before, and I didn't. Uh, I'm going to get down. That is a lot softer. For those of you who can see that, can you see that that is a lot softer in terms of the light output? Now, what people sometimes make the mistake of doing, if they use the fusion, they put it right against the light. This does help but it's nowhere near as effective as moving it very, very close to the subject, right? And you can see already in the glasses that that looks much brighter. Yeah, the highlight, the catch light reflection in the glasses is, is much better. Um, I'm trying to just think of a way of showing this to you so that you can, some of you can see. You might have to just unfortunately stand up in order to, all right? So that, can you see how different that, and what's happening is, can you see the size of this light source now? We've got a tiny light source, 
and we move that in front and all of a sudden we've got a big light source. Yeah? That is much more flattering. Uh, can you afford an LED light that's got that many LEDs all over it to get that kind of size? Probably not, right? Um, so I know like this size here is probably closer to an, an EOS, right? Hasn't got the light output, admittedly, but when, the further and further I move it away, even when you look at me, right, this, the light on me is very, very soft, very, very flattering. And you'll notice that those who do video tend to rely less on things like soft boxes. They, you tend to see them using um, pieces of poly that they will bounce light off and they will tend to shoot through things like this because these are really cheap, right? You just need to have a little bit more space. Soft boxes take less space. Um, whereas with these, they do have a bit more space. But just know that if you have a very small light source, add just a little something in front of it and you are pretty much good to go. Love it. Uh, excellent. Any, uh, thank you very much for listening to me as I kind of uh, uh, just explain some of the thought processes involved in the lighting. Uh, thank you to those of you online as well. And thank you all for, for listening. I'm going to be hanging out, but really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, India. <laughs>